Hello, my friends. This is take two because my first try, my microphone wasn't on. I had the backup audio still going, but only the best for you. We're going to maintain quality on this channel. This time I am equipped with a Celsius because I've been speaking for 45 minutes and I have to redo it. <laughs> Let's talk about this challenge first. I'm doing the 100 heads in 10 days challenge by Ahmed Alduri, and I am finally getting to it. His video with his instructions and suggestions, as well as his Pinterest board, are going to be linked down in the description. I think those definitely should be your guideline in figuring out what you want to do with this challenge because I switched some stuff around a tiny bit and I'll explain why I did so. First off, I wanted to do this challenge because I enjoy drawing faces. I draw so many girl faces and so I thought that I would be like the perfect candidate for this challenge because I love drawing faces. I thought I was going to enjoy this so much and it was going to be so easy. My goal for this challenge was to learn and to continue developing my style as well as learning how to draw and capture likenesses. I didn't really focus on drawing quickly and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. If you're going to be taking my video as kind of a template for yourself, realize I decided to spend as much time as I wanted on each sketch rather than giving myself time constraint. When I first checked out Ahmed's Pinterest board, I must be honest with you, I found that there were too many pretty girls and a lot of exaggerated older men with beards as well as a lot of sculptures. And while I think that this reference board might be good for some artists. I don't draw a lot of old men and don't really plan on doing so and I already draw a lot of pretty girls from like very specific angles. I knew that for me to grow I needed to focus on references that were outside my comfort zone. For example, I have difficulty drawing younger men, not so much older but definitely younger men and older women. I also have a really hard time drawing extreme angles like an extremely upturned face. So I decided to pick references from Ahmed Alduri's Pinterest board that I thought I would use and would be beneficial for me as well as to add my own photos that I found that I would typically never draw and are not my typical references but I thought would help me learn in this challenge. My Pinterest board is going to also be linked in the description if you'd like to check it out and compare my drawings to the originals or if you'd like to use it for yourself. But all that being said, please check out the original video and Pinterest board to kind of understand what the challenge is and then maybe you'll find that you also need to tweak it a bit or that it works perfectly as is for you. For my materials, I used the Shinola Large Hard Linen Journal. It has these like kind of creamy white pages and this isn't a sketchbook. They also make a sketchbook, but I really did enjoy using this plain journal and I would recommend it if you're interested in it. For my pencils, I used a regular big 0.7 millimeter HB number two pencil, very standard. And then I switched later to the Pentel Graph Gear 500.3 pencil. I'll explain why I did so in a bit. I've seen other artists use ink or even paint. I truly don't know how some people would be capable of that because pencil was overwhelming enough for me. If you yourself are overwhelmed and I've seen people do really pretty sketchbook spreads with different media. That's not me and it's very cool for them, but for me it was not realistic at all. When I started drawing, I started drawing from the Pinterest board in order from the bottom to the top the way that I saved them and then I also drew from right to left because I draw with my left hand and I didn't want my hand to smudge across the drawings. I did use a fixative on each sketchbook spread so that there would not be any transfer when I was drawing on the back of the paper. So if you're also drawing in a sketchbook, I highly recommend using a fixative to set everything in place and make sure that your drawings don't get smudgy. Day one, I drew for two hours. I really wasn't too happy with the first drawing. I felt that it was a bit muddy and if I wasn't doing this challenge just drawing ahead, I wouldn't really have liked it. I thought it was all over the place, honestly. I liked the second drawing, but I didn't feel that it captured the likeness of the photo very well, so it wasn't, in my opinion, successful. And as I progressed in this challenge, I found that I have a much harder time drawing Asian girls. I don't even really struggle with drawing Asian men, but somehow drawing younger Asian women is pretty difficult for me. You'll see later on too, I do a pretty bad job of it and it's something that I've learned that I need to work on. I knew that I needed to work on it, but this challenge really showed me how bad I was at it. 
Drawing 3 was a lot more similar to the style that I wanted. It's a lot more graphic, angular, and color blocked. The marks are intentional and light. There's not a lot of marks to tell the story that I need the marks to tell. I really did like drawing 3. And then the choice of a grid. You'll see I learned what kind of sketch configuration I like later on in this challenge, but the cramped grid of 9 was not a good choice. I was really stressed drawing inside these grids, especially since the drawings were so small and I really wasn't sure why I didn't love the drawings. I realized that the pencil lead thickness was too thick for the grid of the paper and how small these drawings were, so probably halfway around this challenge I switched to a thinner lead you'll see that soon. did like drawing 10. It was my first span of the challenge, but I thought it was fine. There was nothing revolutionary to it. Day two, I spent almost three hours drawing, which is pretty crazy. Long time. I wasn't very pleased with these drawings either. Half of them to me looked really muddy, and then half of them were a little bit more graphic the way I wanted them to look, but all of the men on this day look pretty rough in my opinion. I really wasn't passionate about the reference images, a lot of the poses and expressions were similar to what I usually draw, and so I wasn't feeling challenged. I did enjoy number 20, and I think this was one of the first drawings that captured the style that I wanted to portray with the rest of these sketches, where it was graphic, bold, not too many lines, and it felt perfectly balanced. Day three, I drew for two hours. I was disappointed by how I was rendering the Asian girls. They don't look Asian at all. I showed my partner these sketches and he really liked sketches 24 and 25 and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't really like them. They don't really look Asian to me. And he was like, oh, I would never have thought that that was an Asian model that you used. And I was like, well, great. <laughs> Perfect. It's kind of crazy how I just, what, what is it? Why can't I, why can't I come, why can't I, why can't I make it look proper? <laughs> I don't understand how I can draw this like old wrinkly man, but I'm not able to draw an Asian girl. What is up with that? This day, I started some drawings that I was really proud of, and those are namely 27 and 30. They have great marks and great character. Number 27 is an amazing reference photo, and then number 30 is such a fun model. Both of these, I had a blast drawing, and I was starting to like loosen up a bit. I think if you ask me where I started to slow down a tiny bit, it has to have been on day four, like midway through it. I spent about two and a half hours drawing, and I was very encouraged by this day. Daily drawing was really fun. I felt accomplished for keeping up with something for four days now, and Drawing 31, the very first drawing of the day, started off fantastic. I love the marks that I used and the shading. I also wanted to add people with glasses to the Pinterest board because drawing glasses is 
kind of difficult at least for me and I wanted a little bit more practice with that so I truly did love number 31 what I really did not love was drawing 33 it was absolutely tragic I was so upset about how I rendered this subject because the model that I used is absolutely beautiful and I really couldn't capture that at all I was so upset with myself that I wanted to redraw it again and I didn't because I wasn't sure if I drew her again if it would count as head 34 or what that would be about so i decided to put a pin in it and then come back to this photo and draw it again and do it justice the next time 34 was not great either but drawing 36 i loved i love how quickly i rendered the expression how dynamic the marks are and how few marks i used to capture the facial expression the subject matter everything how i rendered everything i love i love 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 this drawing and that's something i want more of in my sketches is to have it look effortless and dynamic and graphic the next five drawings on this page are all great in one way or another. I love all the subject matter and the combination of these faces together and I felt very confident drawing number 38 because I also feel that I captured her expression well and I, I love the marks in this drawing. I finished up this page pretty quickly and then day five I spent three hours drawing. This is where I drew number 41, I enjoyed it, and then I decided to switch to a thinner lead. I'm not sure why it took me such a long time to realize this, but I don't usually draw with a 0.3. I think if I had had a 0.5 on hand, I would just have immediately switched to a 0.5, but I think internally I was like, 0.3 is way too thin. Switch to the 0.3 lead and this is where the drawing started to take a turn for the better, I would say. I was enjoying the materials that I was using so much more and that I think also shows in my drawings because when I enjoy something more, I'm putting in more time and patience into each artwork. The whole vibe of these drawings changed from the thicker lead to the thinner lead. There's a lot more precision in my work. Not every drawing on this page was perfect, but I love 43 and 44 and I think that's because there are two subject matters I would normally never try to draw. I've never drawn a middle-aged black woman or an older black woman and I've never drawn like a younger white boy, like an adolescent boy. I have no idea why I would ever draw an adolescent boy, but both of these drawings I think I captured their character so well, the likeness, the shading, they're beautiful to me. They're very much the way that I want my drawings to look like and I'm very proud of these two drawings. The marks that I made for the rest of this day were confident, precise, and dimensional. I love that the thin lead allowed me to capture crisper details and add fine hatching to these drawings. Day six, I drew for two and a half hours. This was probably my most successful day. I was pretty tired at this point. However, the very first drawing I made that day popped off. I love the shapes that I created. I love the shading and the details. And I think one of the main reasons is because I think it's such a beautiful drawing. And when I was choosing reference photos, I was scrolling through conventionally attractive people and people that are not conventionally attractive. And this model is nowhere near conventionally attractive, but I love that with art, you can portray character and beauty in such a different way than we just generally perceive it. I think I captured his likeness really well. So I'm very proud of that. This drawing shows me how much life and personality you can add to your drawings and paintings. The marks that I made this whole day were confident, precise, and dimensional. I especially loved drawings 58 through 60. I think that 58 captured the age, beauty, and likeness of this actor so well. I'm very proud of it. And number 60, when I would get to the end of any of these days, I would get super tired. <laughs> and the last couple of drawings are always kind of like, I would add some sort of shortcut or like draw it really quickly. I drew all the features of this model a lot more exaggerated than the actual reference photo. And I definitely love the end result. It's very graphic, intentional, fun. Now we move to the realistic side of things. Day seven, I 
only drew for an hour and 15 minutes and that's because uh, it was a Sunday and I had plans all day long. I woke up a little bit earlier and drew a bit but I only got seven drawings in in an hour and 15. I love number 67. I think that I drew it in just a couple of minutes and I did such a good job. Again, I think I captured her likeness with just a few lines, just a little bit of shading. Very proud of this drawing. And then day eight, also tragic. I only drew for an hour and 15 and only drew three people, three faces. I think this is where this challenge is a challenge and not realistic for sustained success. I don't know who has this much time every single day to be drawing. Again, it's a challenge, it's supposed to be fun, it's not a commentary, there's nothing wrong with this challenge, but I was getting tired. Day 7, I was like, I want a break. I want one day off, but I did it. I did a good job with these drawings and on day eight, I drew three, that's fine. I'm pretty honest about my mental health and just my personal health in general on this channel and I just didn't feel up to it. It was a kind of a not fun day for me and I didn't want to draw it. But day nine <laughs> is where I had to catch up. So I was behind on 10 drawings and had 10 drawings that day. I did 20 drawings this day and I spent around five and a half hours drawing. This day I also had pretty bad anxiety, was just not feeling 100%. So the way that I broke it up is I broke this whole drawing time into like three or four sessions. When I would feel myself getting anxious, I went and I cleaned a bit, I washed dishes, I made some food. And once I finished the 10 heads, the first 10 heads at any rate, I had dinner, I took a bath, I drank some beer, I put on a movie, and then I finished the rest of the head so that I could be relaxed. So if you yourself are being me feeling in the exact same position of being anxious or just not being able to sit still, maybe do as I did and do something to relax and come back to this in a calm, calm manner. I really liked drawing 72. 74 i also like 76 but when i came back to the spread i like every drawing on this uh, spread except for 89 i just didn't want to draw a little girl and it shows <laughs> i left drawing 84 a little bit more sketchy in comparison to the rest of the artwork because i liked the shading and the looseness of the sketch and i felt that if i added more rendering to the subject that i might lose that and i didn't want it to become too muddy so i think this is the one sketch out of them all that i left a little bit unfinished but i like the way that it looks and i think that was intentional i think that 85 and 90 both look so effortless well designed capture the models likenesses so well i'm proud of them and you can start to see the progress i think in my artwork Day 10. This is the last day. This was yesterday, so I'm filming my recap today. I drew for a little bit over two and a half hours, and while not all of these drawings are my favorite, I can definitely see a difference between this spread as opposed to the first or second days. Just the way that I composed the image, what marks I thought were important to communicate. They're, these are mostly men on these pages, and I think I did a really good job with them.
when I got to 99, I drew something so half-assed. It's like when you're working out and you're doing the last reps of a set and you're so tired and everything is giving out. That's kind of how it was. It was not it was not my 100%. I just wanted to be done. I was so close to the finish line. Drawing 100 is fine. Not my favorite. I also didn't love the reference photo. That's why I guess I saved it for last. But I did it. I did 100 drawings. Let's talk about my final thoughts. <laughs> Would I recommend this? This was definitely a challenge. I only made other art one day of this whole challenge and that was working on a digital painting for I think two hours on like day three or four. If I had other projects to work on, I don't think that this would have been a sustainable challenge, but because I had set aside 10 days time to do this, I thought it was appropriate. I definitely think that this challenge helped me improve my drawings of men and of older women and I would be very curious to see if I could draw either of them from my imagination or just a quick glance at a reference photo and then trying to incorporate those features into a sketch without looking back at the reference. So maybe that's a good idea for um, a future video. Let me know if you'd like to see that. I do think I improved, especially in my drawings of men. My hands hurt a ton after every day of drawing and that is because these drawings were so small and also detailed. When I'm just drawing a regular sketchbook spread, I like to alternate between drawing something small and detailed with something a little bit larger with more sweeping lines, not quite as detailed because drawing so small is so hard and all your tiny little bones and your wrists drawing larger and using your like sweeping motions just better for your hand and your health and all this stuff i was the one who decided to add so much detail and to put in so much time into each of these drawings that's just something to note if you're also experiencing just some minor discomfort and pain that drawing small is going to do that to you i also wanted to point out that some of these drawings are a little bit wonky and that's because of the perspective warp from filming when i was filming i was drawing on this flat table with a camera pointed down and I was looking at the image from this diagonal. I can't like look directly down because my head would block the camera. There will be some distortion because of the way that I was viewing these drawings. So if you see that, don't worry, it's fine. It's because I'm filming. This is why I don't often show the sketching process for bigger paintings or more detailed drawings because I want to make sure that all the proportions are correct and I can look at them straight on. The question is, would I recommend this? Yeah, for sure. If you like drawing, if you want to be better at drawing, this is a great challenge. It's difficult. It is a challenge. And I didn't personally, I thought I was going to be like easy peasy, fine, draw an hour a day and I'd be okay. I don't know about that one, chief. My advice to you is that if you draw slowly, set a five to 10 minute timer per drawing so that you can learn what gestural marks and the key features of a drawing are. So you don't get like muddled up in too many details. Our Alicia has a great video. I'll link it down in the description. She also did this challenge and kind of talks about that. She started to set herself a timer for her sketches so that she could just focus on being loose and gestural with her marks. And so if that's something that you struggle with, setting a time limit is a great idea. If you're like me and struggle with likeness, is you should take more time on each drawing to take time to reflect on the details that you add to your pieces. Would I do this again? I would absolutely not do this again. <laughs> I did enjoy drawing every day and I think that's something that's a great takeaway from this challenge is that even 30 minutes drawing in the morning on a weekday or workday is great for loosening me up, for helping me improve, and it did give me a sense of accomplishment that I achieved something that day and set me up for success for the rest of the day. I felt so productive and on top 
of my goals and my work. It's discouraging being a full-time artist when a lot of your work is admin and you don't get a lot of time to sketch. So you're not sketching a ton, so you're not improving and it's a cycle. So it was wonderful to draw every single day and I'm hoping to continue incorporating that into coming days, but just in a little bit more of moderation. This is not an easy challenge. So if you are struggling with it, if you've done it or you want to do it, it's a challenge. Ahmed can speak for himself, but I would say <laughs> if you can't accomplish a hundred heads in 10 days or you feel discouraged, that's okay. It's better to be working and to progress in your work than to not do anything at all because if you're a failure. So if this was encouraging to you to see my process and to see other people's, there's the hashtag 100 heads challenge that you can check out to see other people's work and to be inspired. But if you get easily discouraged because you think you should be doing a better job or that you're not progressing enough, don't compare yourself to other people's work and just do it yourself. The total time spent on this challenge drawing was over 25 hours, which is absolutely crazy. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment, let me know if you've done this challenge, if you're doing it and your thoughts on my drawings, what you do differently. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my drawings, seeing my progress, and learning a little bit more about my process. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.